Hello viewer, welcome back to FM Scout, your number one place for FM content. My name is RDF and in today's video we will be looking at a tactic that I have created for you guys. This tactic was tested with Newport County in the lower leagues, they are in the Sky Bet League 2, they are predicted to finish 15th, so make sure you don't forget to check out where we did finish. Before we get started with this video, please subscribe, like and comment. Let's help this video get out there so more people can see this video, let's help the reach, let's help others. Also I have noticed that some of you skip through the videos when I share tactics so make sure you don't skip through this one. I will be showing you some training schedules, all of these things are going to be important but for now let's get started with this video. So here we are, this is the home screen, I'm just showing you this because you can see Newport County are predicted to finish 15th. And like usual now, I will be showing you the results at the start. I'm just going to show you some results at the start. So here we are, the Sky Bet League 2. Who are the champions? You guessed it, Newport County. We played 46, we won 26, we drew 10, we lost 10, we scored 86 and we conceded 55. For the team statistics, we had the second highest average possession in the league. We scored the most goals with 86, we had the highest expected goals for with 70.10. We had the most shots at goal, we had the most shots per game also and when it comes to dribbling we came in second. We came in second with the dribbles made and we came in second with the dribbles made per game. Defensively we had the 8th best defence in the league managing to get 15 clean sheets out of 46 games. For the player statistics, you can see that our striker, Amund, he managed to be the top scorer. He scored 28 goals, whilst Twine managed to score 13 goals for Newport County. And for the assist, we have Robbie Wilmot in 7th place. He managed to get 10 assists and Aaron Lewis is there with 7 assists. But what tactic is this? We are now going to look at the tactic. It is called RDS laying the smackdown, 4-1-3-2. I'm a huge wrestling fan and I finally got to use a wrestling title for a tactic name. I'm likely going to feature more wrestling names in the future. But in goal, we have the sweeper keeper on the support duty. He has no extra instructions. For the left back and the right back, they are both inverted wing backs. They have identical instructions. Dribble more, shoot less often, get further forward and tackle harder. In defence, we have two ball playing defenders. They have no instructions. I have tried to keep this tactic as simple as I could. I don't want to have so many team instructions. So if someone does download this tactic, they won't be struggling to tweak the tactic because now there shouldn't be too many options for them to choose from. But in central defence, we have two ball playing defenders. In defensive midfield, we have a defensive midfielder on the support duty. His instruction is to take more risks, hold position, tackle harder and mark tighter. The left winger and the right winger are both wingers on the support duty. They have identical instructions apart from the right winger has one more added one which is cross from the byline but the identical instructions are pass it shorter, take more risk, get further forward, tackle harder and mark tighter. In central midfield we have an advanced playmaker on the attack duty. His instruction is to play more direct passes, tackle harder and mark tighter. Up top we have two pressing forwards, two aggressive strikers. They have no added instructions, they are just the standard pressing forward. Now for the team instructions, for the mentality, we have the positive mentality. The attacking width is on 50% so fairly wide with the positive mentality. In approach play we are going to be playing out of defence, the passing directness is set to shorter and the tempo is on extremely high. For the transition, again we've just kept it simple here, when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press, when the possession has been won we are going to counter. We're not going to over complicate things with goalkeeper distribution, even in possession we're not really over complicating things, we're not doing anything too difficult with our passing, we're not asking players to do additional dribbling or work the ball into the box, it's really just a standard tactic here. Out of possession, we have the offside trap, we have a much higher line of engagement, a standard defensive line and the defensive whip is set to narrow. The pressing intensity is extremely urgent but if you feel that your team can't handle the extremely urgent pressing, you can simply knock it back by one to more urgent but for default it's on extremely urgent and we are preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. 
Now, for the set pieces, there really aren't any. For the attacking corners on the left and the right, all I've done is just put the near post and I've stuck someone at the near post. That's all I've done. For the throw-ins as well, for the attacking throw-ins, we've just set it to long for the left and right. We haven't moved anybody. We haven't done anything, again, overcomplicated. It's just a simple tactic for you guys to enjoy. So that is the tactic. We're now going to look at a few more results to try and get the understanding and the importance of certain players. But for the attacking efficiency, you can see we were aggressive, not really clinical enough. Maybe if we did add work ball into the box, we could have been more clinical. For the defensive efficiency, you can see that we were quiet but kind of leaky. So defensively as well, we can improve on some things. Maybe you guys can improve something. Maybe you guys can tweak it. For the central defenders, maybe you can switch them to central defenders. Someone that's more defensive minded rather than the ball playing defender. So who were the top goal scorers in our team? We have Eamon, our striker. He was the main striker. He played 47 games and he scored 32 goals. Scott Twine also. He was mainly rotating with Ryan Taylor who also managed to score 12 goals. So your strikers will score plenty of goals. Next is our central defender. He managed to score six goals. So it's clear to see that the two strikers are very important to this tactic. They are going to be your match winners. They are going to score you goals. But who gets the assist? At the moment, our right winger gets the most assist. He has got 10 assists, but surprisingly, our striker who scored the most goals also got the second most assist. So, it's, <laughs> so again, it's simple to see one of your strikers at least is going to be very important. Your central midfielder as well. Those three players, I would say your right mid because he will be crossing down from the byline. One of your strikers and your central midfielders they are going to be key when it comes to creating chances so when it comes to your creative players make sure those are your most creative players and now for the training a lot of you people don't get this far so if you have got this far congratulations not a lot of people get this far and sometimes when people download the tactic and it doesn't work it's because they haven't really listened to the instructions but here we are this is the training schedule now this isn't actually downloadable so you might have to copy this off the screen on monday the sessions are match tactics outfield and team bonding tuesday defend from the front and defend wide Wednesday we have defending engaged, we have chance creation and chance conversion. On Thursday we have attacking corners, teamwork, defensive shape and on Friday we have attacking movement, ready for the match on Saturday, on Sunday we recover and we do a match review. So let me just explain this a little. On Thursday and Friday I have really focused on match preparation. Those two days we are purely focusing on the match and the days before that is where we can focus a little on our tactical style. Defending wide, if we have a look on the impacts it helps us increase our familiarity with the present intensity and the marking that is the main reason why i chose defending wide but we have defending from the front defending engaged chance conversion and chance creation those are all linked and tied in with the tactics so that is important if you have two matches during the week it's similar this is what it looks like it's really similar to the schedule when there's only one match a week we've just tailored it so it suits for two matches in the week for the player individual focus, I'm sorry guys, I don't set any. This is kind of a default thing for me now. I don't really set any individual focuses. As you can see, looking at the training rating, the players are training perfectly fine. We have someone on a 9, we have someone on an 8.9, an 8.65, an 8.55. I mean, these are very high training ratings, so clearly it's not really that important to have an individual focus the main reason why i didn't do it is because we play lots of games i really just wanted to not burn out my players in the training but that unfortunately is it for today's video today's video is called laying the smackdown it's created by myself on the fm scout website it's going to be there make sure you go to the site to get the download or the download link is just going to be in the description please make sure you are subscribed like and comment on this video help this video get its reach let's get this video out there my name is rdf from fm scout this was a huge pleasure of recording this for you i will see you soon stay safe and peace out.